the tunnels up. Um, gonna do the planting and amending and trellising and all that stuff. So, since this isn't a high tunnel and there's no cables, or we're not in a field where uh, we're Florida weaving or whatever, um, what I do is take some of uh, take some of the extra string that farmer's friend gives you and tie it here, and it. It's the same as this black strap here. All the way down, but above the row, so when you hook on the trellis piece, is right above the plant. Okay, just got uh, 25 planted, and my extension office agent came, and she took some soil samples and stuff. So, a little behind on the day. So these are all ones that I started in the basement and we, I transplanted these up to these one gallon pots. Um, that's pretty big, it's what I got for free. So uh, I'm gonna keep on going down. I'll show you guys planting one and it's pretty much the same for all of them. So yeah. Okay. Came through with the shovel. I got the tape measure right here. So it marks every foot is where I'm, how I'm planting these. I can't find the garden trowel, so I'm using this screwdriver. <laughs> Just busting up this hole. And scooping it out here. And um, so you know, the one gallon, pot it up. Sorry, I'm in a 50 cell tray. Uh, I'm gonna take off this lower leaf. Just pinch it. Take off the suckers. I'll do a video on the pruning too. So I'm gonna flip this thing over. Everything's intact. Oh, uh, you can plant them deeper. It'd probably be better if you planted it deeper, but our soil really sucks right here, so I'm not doing that. Um, this is the amendment. I'll go over what this is. Just put that around the root ball. Cover this back up. But do it fast because I got like 200 things to plant today or something like that. But yeah, I'll go over the amendments and then it will be the trellis and then the cucumbers. Quick note on uh, planting them. I'm burying the stems like that because it's not grafted. So it will root out of its stem when it's planted like that. If it's grafted, which means you took a rootstock and um, grafted it, basically, so like spliced it together, in a sense, um, to your desired fruit. You're getting the rootstock for like disease resistance and stuff like that. Now, if you plant that one below its grafting point, you will sprout roots that aren't disease resistant. So that is. That. All right, the uh, the amendment. So that's what it is. It is compost, biochar, or the product is Miramichi Green. I'll show you that. So in a wheelbarrow, there is a bag of that. Um, Fill up just about the rest with compost, and then I added from the amendments here. Um, I got a soil test video that explains a lot of this, so that's there. I'm not going to re explain it. Sulfate of potash that's your uh, potassium that's going to be really important for the fruiting of the tomatoes. This is alfalfa meal. Um, Azomite, 
That's your micronutrients. Um, and, uh, and any source of nitrogen that you can get, uh, like feather meal or bone meal. Um, there's a product called Harmony too that is based off chicken manure. If you can get a nice chicken manure uh, amendment of some sort, that'll work. But so how this works, number one I want to thank uh, Pete Canaris from Green Dream. Showed me this product. It is made in North Carolina and I guess Justin Timberlake owns the business. What's up? Hey. I'm uh, recording stuff for a video right now. Can I call you back? Alright, thanks. Love you too. Bye. Uh, so Miramichi Green. This is compost and biochar. Biochar is, um, well, it comes from a law, like a, there's a super old civilization that they had their row crops and then a ditch. Well, at the end of the season, they put their row crops in the ditch and lit it on fire and then covered it with soil. And then that became their beds next year. But what happens is when the wood and things like that are just carbon, really mostly wood, but when it burns, when it's like smothered and it burns without oxygen, so to speak, it doesn't actually flame up. It like turns kind of to charcoal. And then, so they like make this in a vacuum or some crazy process. I'm not really totally sure how biochar is really made commercially, but um, besides the point, it's organic and natural. It's just carbon basically. So a handful of biochar is equivalent to the surface area of a tennis court. So if you think about the water holding capacity of that and the nutrient holding capacity, that's huge. And um, it also says in the bag, well, reduces water needs. Reduces water needs. Um, aerates soil, reduces compaction, that's part of, yeah. Uh, Reduces fertilizer and chemical inputs. That's part of the nutrient holding capacity of it. Buffers pH. So uh, what that means is if you have a really acidic pH or a really alkaline pH, there because of the amount of hydrogen and the areas that it takes up in the soil, you're not going to have certain nutrients available. What biochar does is it can pull those nutrients from the soil into this, its actual self, whatever you want to call it, the biochar bit, and then that becomes available to the plant. Um, increases nutrient uptake. So CEC, can you see that there? Um, CEC is cation exchange capacity. That's like your soil's fuel tank. And it increases it because you're giving the nutrients and minerals a home and some soil biology at home that they could live in that would be the biochar and um, it makes a big difference. Yeah, biochar makes a huge difference. We used to use this stuff with trees like construction damage site trees and you put uh, biochar with the fertilizer, aerate the soil around the tree so you're de like decompacting it and then put this down. Big difference. Uh, this stuff, so when I was talking about mixing this with all the amendments, then you add the water. The water is what lets the biochar soak in everything, so you're charging it is the term. And if you just were to go out and just throw this out on the beds, it's probably not going to do a whole lot for you. But if you charge it before you put it in, this is 20 bucks a bag, like I'm not going to go throw it around on the beds. I'm gonna put it right in the planting hole for the long-term crops that I know are gonna benefit the most from it. This stuff, compost, you know, you could do leaf compost too if you have leaf compost. And then when, when you're using your amendments, you're getting all of your, like, azomites, kind of like your micronutrients, your NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and yeah, we did this last year with the tomatoes and I put like two shovelfuls in each hole and didn't fertilize for the rest of the year and they grew very well. 
couldn't do that here this year because they raised the price on this. <laughs> so we got it there while we could at a good price and it's just different this year. So we'll be doing probably applications on the tomatoes and cucumbers throughout the season instead of just this big one up front. All right, I'm setting up these uh, uh, trellising things now. So this is what they look like. Just unwind this one. And set it on the rope. So we have our string here and we have these clips too and the clip goes in here, I'm just going to clip the base of it and then you're going to end up training the plant up the twine, We're twisting it there. As this grows, you pull out the suckers, which grow in these crotches here, and just keep wrapping the head around. But I'll show that when that happens. But for now, I'm just gonna be clipping every plant. This is the uh, cucumbers, so plant, got the hole, I use a screwdriver because I still can't find the garden trowel. You don't want to plant these deep. Uh, same method here, flip it upside down. This is sun scald right here. Um, I didn't harden them off correctly. They're in the basement too long. And then I put them outside on a cloudy day and that cloudy day became sunny and damaged them really quick. So putting them under shade tarp or something like that could have solved that issue. These are the amendments. I'm gonna leave the crown there exposed because it's super sensitive to rotting. And that's it. Just plant them all like that and then as they get trellis and stuff, I'll show that too.
You might be wondering why um, there's no weed mat here, but there is in the other tunnel. Um, I was talking to my friend Nate. That's um, Nate's a market gardener. It's his uh, business is called Cultinate Greens, and um, he actually just started a YouTube channel. He's going through the whole process of uh, you know getting his land ready and all that. He's gonna do a little bit this year, and then maybe get into it heavier next year. But he uh, he was in it pretty heavy last year. He did really really well. So. I've actually been talking to him through Instagram and on the phone and stuff like that. But anyways, he told me about putting the silage tarp white side up so you get more light in here. But you also have a ground cover and so less weeding. You're getting more light so things will grow faster when there's not that much sunlight during the day. Water retention, it's good for the worms. Um, plenty of benefits. but. He told me about that, I was like, man, that's a good idea. So, here it is. Uh, thanks for the tip, Nate. One thing I am missing in here is drip tape for irrigation. Well, I need to order the connectors still. So, when it does get here, I'll just move the tarp and then put the drip tape down, put the tarp back over it, and then it's good. It's super bright in here, so. I like feel like I need to wear sunglasses out. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a good tip. So check out uh, Nate's stuff. I think this is gonna work pretty good. I just got home from getting uh, Addy dog food. Walked up in here, and there is this package from Amazon, and it was this uh, it was this microphone with the <laughs> with the wind blocker deal. And I was like, oh wow, that's nice. Tori went out of her way to um, give me a microphone for the camera. And it was from John and Angela, our friends at Heirloom Permaculture. Thank you guys, that's awesome. Really appreciate it. Anybody that's watching this, head out, check out their channel. Their, uh, their family doing a lot of permaculture stuff in their yard. They came here to visit actually um, about mid-March. They got a video about that visit and yeah, just top-notch great people. Check them out. All right, testing this mic out. Let's see, it's windy out. Does it sound any better? I hope so. I, I recorded a bunch of stuff like, oh, this is awesome, and then realized I didn't set up the settings. So, if this is better, go to their channel, comment on one of their videos. There's a, there's a lot of good ones, and thank them. This is super cool, guys. Awesome. Thanks again. Oh my god, camera, you looking nice. What? Yo. What do you think about this new microphone? Pretty lit, huh? Okay, good. Is this thing fresh or what? So fresh.